It's MG Rob back with you. Once again, we're back on the MGA Fastback. So I went ahead and put the flange for the fender on and tacked the flange to the fender, or the fender to the flange, sorry. So I could see what all this is looking like and try to pull all this up to the flange. I just got it really rough right now because I, this front section here, I'm still trying to work out and I didn't know that I even had the cut line right. And of course, cutting this off and pulling this up is gonna make this short. And I was just, before I start the other side, I wanted to figure out what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong up here so I don't repeat mistakes on that side. So I think for the most part, this doesn't look too bad, but I definitely missed on the line up there a little bit because this was too far in on the flange side. And then of course this pulled out. So I got to play with this area here and I didn't quite have this cut right here. So I'm going to work on this area here a little bit, get everything to fit right here and then use that knowledge over there so that I do that right the first time and not go back and redo stuff. So I got this window set roughly in place, not quite exactly where it's going to go, but close. And you can see that this is a much softer curve here now. It's not as much of a dip, so it helps visually a little bit with this. But when I was trying to work on this area here, I tried to cut it and pull it up. It wasn't working very well. I had to cut further and, and ended up bending it up a little bit. It is short here because as you bring that up, you need additional metal on the outside. It needs to be longer there. So we'll get the fender off, start playing with all this stuff and see what we can improve. So one of the other things I've had to deal with here was actually the shape of the rear window here. I've had to tweak on that a little bit. And now that I've actually got a better positioning on the, the side window and I actually have some inner structure in here that gives me a better sight line of what we've got going on here and what that shape's actually going to be. I can look down from here and imagine the shape across here. And I've seen that the corners of these were just up too high. And especially as it comes around here, I wasn't making a good enough transition from here to there and it was kind of abrupt. So what I need to do is reshape this, which I've been working on. And one we can do to reshape that is I got a conductor stake over here. So it's got a round, it's got a flat side on one side and rounded on the other, and you can beat over that. And if we put that on the conductor stake and then hammer on this edge here, we'll actually stretch that metal here, making that curve a little bit more because we can't put it in the shrinker stretcher because of the shape of this. And what we do is just hammer on it, get it to where we think we worth. I think it's better, bring it back in, put it back in place, and then sight down this. And just keep doing that, back and forth, back and forth, until this looks like it's going to work out like I want it to. And we've got a time lapse here of me doing some of that. So now I've taken what I've learned from my mistakes in laying out the line over here and knowing what I have now here, and I've applied that to this side to change the line starting from there all the way up. So now it sh should be able to cut this and be much closer to where I want right out of the gate. Let's get this fender off and get it cut. So a quick trial fit of one of the other flanges I made actually looks pretty decent. Now on the other side, when I was figuring all this out, I didn't actually film a lot of this stuff. Um, Cause the way I work when I'm really trying to figure out a problem is I tend to just crank the radio up and just go at it. Then I don't film anything 
because uh, well, partly because YouTube does not allow us to have the music in the background, and um, partly because I'm just thinking too much and then forget to turn the camera on. This side, I'm going to show more of the process of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and uh, so you actually get to see a little more fabrication. So it looks like we got a bit of a rust hole here that we didn't have on the other side. So I'm going to have to deal with uh, repairing this area here before I can finish this where I didn't have to do, to do that on the other side. All right, so I've done, went ahead and put a little patch panel in right here. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to start making the pieces to fit into here. Now what I've got is I've got some drops here that are, I don't know, it's about 11 inches wide, something like that, 12 inches wide, that I'm using to do this. That seems to be a good manageable length to work with to get this to curve and not pull off on you when you're tacking it back together. So what I do is I get some cardboard and I cut the same length. Now this is just like cereal boxes or any of those pre-packaged stuff on the inside of the grocery store, that cardboard works really well, or from pop cases, stuff like that, works really well. Basically, I'm just gonna take this, and then you know, pick a spot where I'm gonna start with, put that up in there, take a pencil that's reasonably sharp, run a line across the inside here, and then you can mark the other side. Now, if you get this stuff that's, um, you can go to like Sam's Club and stuff like that and this very similar cardboard that they put between like layers of toilet paper on the um, pallets and stuff, that works really well too and it doesn't have any printing on it. And then you can just run and line that. Or like with this thing here, you can just take this and just push it against you got to make sure not to push this off line and just kind of push it up against that. Down the length. And then we'll actually put a small crease in the cardboard along there. And then that's where you can cut it. You cut it across there, cut it across there, and then put it back in here. Make sure it fits like you wanted it to. And actually, it's a good idea to go ahead and mark it here, you know, because I know pretty much where I was here, because this bracket here that's behind there. And then it's a good idea to go ahead and make a mark there to, as a reference to. If a trial fits okay, trench, put this on top of there, transfer it with a marker or something, cut it out. So I transferred my pattern to the metal, got it cut out. And now, of course, we're gonna to have to shape it because it doesn't wanna be straight. And that actually, you can really just kinda of just pull it over your knee a little bit, get a little bit of a curve in it, and just keep tweaking on it until it fits where we want it to. 
Now, almost always, once you get it actually fitting where you want it to, you're gonna find there's gonna be some light trimming, a little bit of grinding here and there to actually get it to fit the way you want, because it's a pattern as a cardboard isn't necessarily going to be perfect and depending on how you cut it out um, how accurate you are with your cuts so I got some minor adjustments to do here and then we can tack it in So then the idea is to just continue that process all the way down here and then up through here. Now when we get up to here, it'll be, I'm actually going to be doing things a little bit differently than just, there'll be some more to transition all that. Now for the way all this transitions up into here, I wanted this line here to kind of just taper off and to kind of cheat a little bit, make it a little easier to make these, this piece up here, I went ahead and just put a little like tapered piece in here and then I'll just bring this down to that. It'll give me two weld lines and I'll have to manage my heat a little bit better, but it'll be a lot less effort in forming this piece and trying to get everything to fit. So I went ahead and did this last little bit off camera here. So now I'm ready to go ahead and weld all this up, do a little bit of grinding to clean it up, and then we can move on to cutting this top piece out. So I got all that welded out, did a little bit of grinding on it, went ahead and got all these holes drilled out to the right size, and I even have one of the captive nuts welded in now because when this brace comes down, it's going to be really close to that, and I won't be able to weld this in once that brace is in. So we're going to get that done first. So next video, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be making this brace that goes down here and then starting with on that one. And then we'll see where we go from there.